All right. Hello, everybody. Welcome to the 407 and Beyond live show. I am your host, Bruce Beal, and I just want to say off the bat, it is good to be with everybody tonight. I missed everyone last week. Unfortunately, due to thunderstorms in the area, we weren't able to uh, do a live broadcast just for the protection of the equipment. Um, and I genuinely missed uh, not hanging out with you guys last Monday night. So um, for those of you who are new to the 407 and Beyond live show, welcome. Um, we are glad that you are here. Every Monday night at 730, we get together as a community to talk about all things Disney and sometimes Universal um, and just have a fun discussion together. This is also a great forum for uh, you to ask any questions that you might have about your vacation or any Disney and Universal news. So if you are, are new, a welcome to the show. It's good to have you. And if you are a regular, which I'm already seeing people in the chat box, um, welcome back. It's good to have you. We wouldn't have this live show without you. So um, on tonight's show, we are going to be taking a, a look at the France Pavilion at Epcot's World Showcase. Um, there's some attractions coming at, at the end of 2020, beginning of, well, sometime in 2021. Um, it's just an exciting uh, pavilion, and we're going to start making our way around World Showcase, taking a look, doing some walkthroughs of the pavilions, uh, getting acquainted with everything it has to offer, um, and talking about our favorites, our not-so-favorites, our recommendations, and so forth. So I see that uh, Casey is here. Casey, good to have you. Thanks for joining us tonight. Um, Casey uh, is a big Disney fan and a great partner to work with. Rachel, Rachel, good to see you. Um, it is good to see you. Sorry we weren't here last week, um, but looking forward to you being here, Rachel. And Susan is back. She says hi. Susan, good to see you again. Uh, thanks for joining. Um, Lydia says, hey, Guy. Um, is that guy me, uh, Lydia? Are you, are you just saying hi to me? Um, but uh, hello to, to Lydia as well. Uh, Casey says, just booked two days at the parks for a couple of weeks from now. Can't wait. That's good, uh, Casey. We're going to have to see some of the content that, that you bring uh, from the park. So looking forward to, to seeing you you there. Um, that's great. So, so guys, sit back. Um, enjoy. Uh, grab, yourself, grab yourself a good drink and participate in the discussion because you are joined in on 407 and Beyond live show. The live show is sponsored by 407 and Beyond Vacation Company, Disney and Universal experts who help plan your family's perfect vacation. So all you have to do is show up, have fun, and create family memories. As always, our services are free to you. Visit us on the web at www.407vacations.com. All right, now let's get to tonight's topic. Um, I'm looking forward to talking about it because it's one of my favorite pavilions, if not my favorite pavilion in World Showcase, and that is... Uh, the France Pavilion. So a little bit of background to the France Pavilion. It is one of the original, um, opened up in 1982, and is designed to look like a Parisian neighborhood. Now one thing I do want to say uh, about tonight's show and talking about the France Pavilion is I am destined and sure that I am going to butcher a few of the names. So if there's anybody out there who speaks French, I already know Lydia does. Um, put the phonetics in the comment box, help me out a little bit. Um, but more importantly, if I do butcher something, feel free, open game. Um, you can make fun of me. I, I, I totally get it. So tonight talking about France, um, France is one of the pavilions in world showcase that is very food centric, very heavy on the food options here. Um, not too many attractions as of yet. We're going to get to that in just a little bit. Um, but very, very uh, food-based uh, pavilion. So um, we have Chefs de France, which is on the left side. Monsieur Paul, which is uh, behind Chefs de France here on the left side, which we'll, we'll get, we'll see in the walkthrough uh, clearly. Um, the Monsieur Paul actually used to be known as Bistro de Paris. Um, so it has gone through a name change. There is a patisserie, which uh, has baked goods, pastry, sandwiches in the back, which we'll see in the walkthrough. 
um, artisan sandwiches, which is one of my favorite places to go. And then there's also uh, a nice ice cream place um, in the back. So um, I'm excited to do this walkthrough with you guys uh, here in just a second. So Lydia says, my favorite is Japan. Yeah, Lydia, Japan is, is a top three for me as well. I'm not going to give my top uh, t pavilion yet. I will give the France pavilion a grade tonight, though. And so I hope you guys um, give, give me your comments in the comment box. Let me know what you think of France, whether it be the, the dining or the attractions. Are you excited about the upcoming attractions, which we'll get to in a minute? Um, and then at the end of the show, please share what, you, what grade you would give um, the France pavilion. So Casey says... Um, I can confirm it looks a lot like France. Yes, um, actually, uh, Casey and Lydia were, were uh, two people I was fortunate enough to go to France with. Uh, had a great time, and the the villages and the Parisian na neighborhoods that we visited, um, the, the, the Epcot Pavilion in the Imagineers did a terrific job. So uh, Lydia says the same thing. It really does look like the side streets of Paris. Um, France is my favorite place for desserts, though. Uh, yeah, it does have some great desserts, uh, which we'll, we'll talk to uh, in just a bit. So um, in terms of attractions at the France Pavilion, it, it, it doesn't have many, although one's coming. Um, the Beauty and the Beast, Beast sing-along, sing uh, which is directly in the middle of the photo here, all the way in the back in the theater, um, shares the same theater as Impressions de France, um, another kind of marquee, iconic Epcot show, um, and they they share the theater and play at different times. So my favorite is definitely Impressions de France. It is probably my favorite show at Epcot, and um, you know, Beauty and the Beast sing along is great. It's great if you have kids. It's fun, but Impressions de France is uh, just very, very classic Disney and very classic Epcot. So. Um, with that, I think uh, I think it's time that we, we do a walkthrough together. So I'm going to put up a five-minute walkthrough of the France Pavilion at Epcot's World Showcase. We'll talk about it. Put your comments uh, in the comment section below. So, all right, let's check it out. And I'm also going to leave the volume on uh, so you can kind of hear the sights and sounds of the, of the pavilion. So looks very Parisian there on the water right there in the river with the, all the artwork. Um, so the, the theming here is top notch. And this video was taken actually just uh, a couple weeks ago during Epcot's Food and Wine Festival. So um, this is the, the France Food and Wine booth uh, to get, you know, Parisian specials. So that's not typically there, but um, is in this video. So it is, and it's there still going on right now. Got some improper mask wearing there. Uh, doesn't happen too often, but uh, it does does occur. Chefs de France, like we said, great meal there. It is uh, table service dining. It is fine dining. So um, I'm gonna turn it down just a bit so I don't have to yell. Um, it is table service dining, so um, you do need to get a reservation. Um, it very good, um, but make sure you get an advanced dining reservation for Chefs de France. And these shops over here to the right are, are very authentic. In fact, they actually have authentic French merchandise. Um, so if you are looking for that special gift um, that is authentically Fran French, those are the shops to go to. Here's the Beauty and the Beast and Impressions de France Theater. Um, like I said, my favorite there is Impressions de France. The poster there on the right side. Um, it's just so classic Disney. Jana says she feels like she's in France. Uh, yeah, the Imagineers nailed this pavilion, which is why, a little bit of a spoiler, I give it a pretty high grade. So, Lydia says, is the festival still going on? It is. There's Monsieur Paul. Now, Monsieur Paul is a step above Chefs de France. And so, um, although not really technically required, you do, it is highly encouraged to, to dress up. Uh, that's a dress for, for ladies. Um, a, a jacket for men, um, but I have seen people go in there without it, so um, I think it's just highly encouraged. And there's there's where you can stop and get ice cream. Jan K says the food is amazing. It is probably the best pavilion for food. And here's the exit to the theater. You can see on your right hand side, um, goes right into this train station. 
uh, gift shop, and, and here's the bakery with all the great sandwiches and um, baked goods and, and pastries, which you'll see in a minute. But France also just has some great cross merch between like the right amount of Disney characters, Mickey and Minnie and, and, and Remy, mixed in with like Parisian and French um, influenced style and, and merchandise. So. Casey says uh, the best. Bruce is making some bold statements. Uh, Casey, wh wh which one's that? Uh, you have to remind me. I'll show you guys a photo of the of the pastries here uh, after this video. You'll have to see it. It's it, it, it's authentic, and it, it, it and Lydia's right. It is a a hot spot and great location to go get dessert after after dinner or any time for that matter the music's so laid back here i love just finding one of these tables getting myself a pastry and a cup of coffee and uh sitting down and enjoying the environment There's the tables at Chefs de France. It is closed. Um, that's why there's nobody in there in the middle of the day. But it, I, being able to sit on the outer side of that building of Chefs de France and eating dinner, looking out at the people passing by, um, it, it, it is a really special uh, dining experience. Casey said he looks like he had a cheese incident where it burned his face. Casey, was that in the French Pavilion? And Jan says the ham and cheese croissant is so good. Uh, I agree. I agree. There's not really a bad thing on the menu here. All right, so that is the walkthrough of the of the France Pavilion, <coughs> um, one one of the top pavilions at, at, at Epcot's World Showcase. So let's um, let's let's talk about ratings. So um, as we go through each each pavilion at Epcot's World Showcase, I'm going to give it a, a score, and I'm going to do it like uh, just typical grading style A B C D and F. Um, and this is based on food, environment, background music, attractions, um, overall aesthetic and theming. <coughs> and um, I, I give the France Pavilion a solid B+. Plus. Um, that, uh, I know it doesn't have attractions yet, which we're going to get to in just a minute. But the, the food options are, are special here. You can... Uh, if you're local or you spent the day at Disney Springs or when park hoppers were available, you spent the day at another park or you did a resort pool day and you wanted to get dressed up and go to a fine dining experience, um, you know, the France Pavilion has two very strong options, uh, Chefs de France and Monsieur Paul. And uh, not, not just the, the aesthetic and background music and the ambiance of, of of the France Pavilion, but just the food alone raises that score for me. Um, and just that that old timey theater that, that houses Impressions de France, now half the time, because it shares it with Beauty and the Beast Sing Along, um, Impressions de France is, is a strong movie. It's a great way to get out of the summer's heat, catch some air conditioning. Um, I often find people uh, maybe falling asleep during this show, but it's, it has nothing to do with the quality of the show because uh, the music and the soundtrack to this show is uh, par none. Um, but just getting out of the heat, um, it, it, it's really, really nice. And then all of the desserts um, at the patisserie. So before we even talk about what's coming to the France Pavilion, I give this a B plus. So what do you guys give this? If you guys experience the France Pavilion, if you have, what grade do you give it and why? Let me know. Let me know in the comment box. Let me know if I'm way off on this one. And you're like, no, 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 it's more of a B minus, or this is a stellar A plus. Um, let me know in the comment box. 
I want to know what your guys' opinions are, but my grade uh, for the France Pavilion is a B plus. So let's start talking about what's to come at, at the France Pavilion. So um, a while back, Disney announced an expansion of the pavilion, and the, the expansion um, is on the side. So this is walking from International Gateway over at the Boardwalk. So coming out from the Beach Club Resort, coming into International's Gateway, um, you can kind of see there straight ahead the Gastos sign for uh, that's part of the expansion. And that, that, that Gastos sign is for Remy's Ratatouille Adventure Attraction. So uh, we're, we are getting a marquee attraction in Epcot's World Showcase at the France Pavilion. And you can see there that it is going to be heavily, heavily themed and aesthetically look like you are in the, 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 the Disney um, film Ratatouille. So um, I, I think this is a huge plus. Um, you can kind of see from the the area here, walking up close, the the Ratatouille sign and the construction wall. And this is on the right side of of um, of that walkway that we originally walked up, and the right side of those merchandise locations and stores. So this is again off to the right side of the pavilion. They are expanding on the right side and around the back. So uh, this is where this new area for Ratatouille will be. This is the entrance that you see here. On the right side with this sign and I just want to point out the the immersion that Disney goes through when when designing these things so this is the sign up close and you can see Ratatouille it looks like the Metro um, sign and this this is an actual Metro sign in in Paris so take a look at this now look back at the construction photo um, for Ratatouille. Well, not that one. Let's go with this one. So you can see how authentic this experience is going to feel and how authentic these country pavilions um, really are. So um, I, I, I'm excited about this. Um, so let, let's talk about Remy's Ratatouille adventure. So um, it was originally slated to open up this summer, um, but because of, of COVID-19, excuse me, park closures, and um, and all, all all the things going on at Disney Parks right now, um, there is no new opening date that has been announced. So Disney has not announced when Ratatouille or Remy's Ratatouille Adventure will open. Again, it was slated for this summer, but but you know due to COVID nineteen and park closures, that the opening date has been pushed back. But the exciting part about this is this is a trackless 4D dark ride based on Ratatouille, and it already exists in Disneyland Paris. So if you want to watch a ride POV of this attraction, it already exists at Disneyland Paris, and you can check that out on YouTube. But <coughs> guests ride in these rat-shaped vehicles and are shrunken down to the size of Remy um, and takes riders through Gusto's restaurant which will feature screen-based, and you can see oversized food there behind the Imagineers. And there will be water and heat effects to make you feel like you are in a kitchen. So um, it's going to be total immersion. You're going to be down the sides of Remy going through Gusto's Kitchen. And um, I, we again, we don't know the, the opening date. Oh, excuse me. We don't know the, the opening date for this attraction yet, um, but I think we have a lot to look forward to. So let, let's look at um, some of the comments here. Back on the France Pavilion, Casey says, B minus, but I can't wait for the new additions. I imagine that uh, my grade will skyrocket from there. Uh, B minus is fair, but I, I will predict, Casey, that Remy's Ratatouille Adventure will knock that up at least, at least to a B plus. So... Um, Lydia says, uh, probably an A minus, but that will most likely go up after the attraction. Um, I would agree. I would give it a solid A, Jan says. After visiting France, Disney did an awesome job of representation. I think that is a, a solid, uh, solid score and analysis of that. Susan says, when will it be open? Um, we don't know yet. So they have not announced. It looks like construction is moving along quickly. It looks like they are finalizing the the outside and the facade of the attraction. And so hopefully hopefully construction is done soon and then they announce um, a reopening. So, oh no, Rachel says, I have never seen Ratatouille. Rachel, um, 
that that is one of uh, Disney's best. So I highly recommend you check that out. Um, but but when you do check that out, Rachel, um, I want you to come back on the live show and let us know what you think because I have yet to know somebody who watched Rat, uh, Ratatouille and did not like it. So so Rachel, your homework is to watch that at some point, um, and and then and when you do, let us know on the live show what you thought of it because I I am curious. Um, and you definitely, Rachel, have to see it before Remy's Ratatouille Adventure opens. I think that'll only make it uh, that much better. So, um, Susan loves Ratatouille. <coughs> oh, Rachel already says, I guess I know what I'm watching this weekend. Perfect. So, Rachel, next Monday night, you let us know what you think. So, that's excellent. And I got my um, Adventureland mug here tonight. So, if you... Or enjoy, <coughs> excuse me, geez. Um, if you are enjoying a drink tonight, hope you have it in your uh, favorite Disney specialty mug like myself. I am kind of a, a mug collector, especially when it comes to Disney mugs. So um, let's talk about, though, in that train station that we went, walk, we went through the walkthrough and I had all of those sandwiches and pastries. These are the pastries I was talking about. So um, they're, they are top notch and Lydia said about how much she likes getting dessert here and it's no wonder why they have top of the line um, pastries and desserts and, and parfaits and puddings and, and just various and unique things and, and when you are at World Showcase I, I think th there's sort of an obligation to to try new things because where else are you going to get authentic French food in this case and so um, it is my own personal recommendation that while you are at World Showcase, and you're going around the pavilions, that you try authentic food from those areas and not just go for the, the, the typical snack. I love Mickey pretzels. I love Mickey ice cream bars. I get it. But when you're at World Showcase, um, you know, get acquainted with, with some authentic food. And, and in France, it's definitely, definitely the pastries. So um, Casey says that he just picked up a Rebellion mug from Galaxy's Edge. It is my daily drinker now. Very good. <laughs> and uh, Lydia says that moose. Um, let's see. Um, the oh yeah yeah yeah. So the, the 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 ice cream place is right here. Before you go into that train station, um, it has seventeen or nineteen flavors. I can't quite remember, but they're all good. And so, <clears throat> not only do you have pastries, um, not only do you have two signature dining places, not only do you have a quick service where you can grab sandwiches and small snacks, but you have ice cream as well for the just the, the, the complete dining experience at the pavilion. So the, the last thing that will be coming, um, and we don't know quite yet if it's opening up and expected to open with Remy's Ratatouille Adventure, and that is um, the creperie. So I don't I'm sure I'm going to need some help with, with how to say that. So, Lydia, uh, let me know. But La Creperie de Paris. Um, I'm glad I don't. Uh, you guys can't see my face right now while I try to say that. So, um, it is scheduled to be built in an all-new location near Remy's Ratatouille Adventure. It, um, it will feature cuisine by the celebrity chef Jérôme Bucuse. Uh, pardon me if I mispronounce that, the mastermind behind Chefs de France and Monsieur Paul. Uh, yes. Uh, thanks, Lydia. Um, yes, I was muted. So what I was saying was for the, the, the creperie, um, it will be on the right side of Gusto's sign here. Um, and, and so, uh, but no one ha has seen it yet, but it, it will be located on, on the right side. Um, I don't know um, if, I, if I was muted. 
before I finish, but the, the, the creperie will, will offer both table service and quick service dining options. So anybody looking for a crepe um, will be able to do that. So that just adds more to the French dining experience, more to the pavilion. And Lydia, um, for you, more, more dessert options. Uh, but Lydia, thanks for uh, letting me know as muted. Um, that happened a couple weeks ago, so I we gotta look into that. Um, what's going on there? So, um, so guys, that is it for for what I have for the France Pavilion. We have two very exciting things coming. One, another food option, and you know me, I love more food options. And two, Remy's Ratatouille Adventure. And if there's anything I love more um, than good food, is a good dark ride. And be, there, because the reviews on the Remy's Ratatouille Adventure over in Disneyland Paris have gotten such great reviews. The ride POV looks so immersive. Um, and just adding another marquee attraction at Epcot, especially in World Showcase, I think just makes it stronger. My final grade for the France Pavilion is, um, is a B plus, but we want to recircle, uh, come back to this when um, Remy's Ratatouille Adventure and Le Creperie um, open. So... <coughs> Lydia says everyone empathizes with you muting yourself. <laughs> uh, yeah, that that's the second time that's happened. So we're gonna have to look into that. I hope I wasn't muted for too long. So, so guys, again, um, thank you for watching us. If this is your first time, welcome. We hope you join back again every Monday night at seven thirty. Just a di different Disney topic. Really, not really a format, but just a discussion uh, of di the Disney community and the four hundred seven and beyond community. So. I appreciate you guys joining me. Please, please, please share us on your Facebook page. Let other people know that you are watching and that they are welcome to join too because the more Disney and Universal fans um, that join us, the merrier, the better. And, and guys, you are always more than welcome to comment in the comment box. I want to know what you're thinking. Um, and so I, I, I think we're going to go ahead and extend kind of a, a little bit of a series here looking at the different world showcase pavilions we have walkthroughs of each pavilion so each week we'll feature a walkthrough um, we'll talk about the dining locations located in the pavilions any attractions any news with that pavilion that uh, may be coming up later in 2020 or 2021 um, and anything that you guys need to know and then that way when you guys are back at Epcot's world showcase on your next Disney vacation. You guys are prepared to master the food, get all the attractions done that you can, and enjoy authentic experiences at World Showcase. So guys, sorry again for being mute, muted uh, there for a little bit, and sorry again we couldn't go out last week. I truly missed um, our, our fun 30 minute conversation and hanging out with you guys. So I hope you guys have a great week. Please stay safe. Stay well, and I will see you next Monday night for another edition of 407 and Beyond Live. Take care, guys.